What's going on guys? Dragast here and today we're going to be opening up a vineyard in a little game called Terror. Now this is a new winemaking tycoon game that was recently released on Steam Early Access and I picked it up today. I'm actually really excited to get into this one. I haven't played a strategy game in a while now and I've been craving one. Uh, so hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this as well. Now I did go through the tutorial. It looks like it's a nice casual strategy game uh, with a little bit of depth in it as well. Now I don't know much about wine making so bear with me here with the terms and whatnot uh, I'm probably not gonna be very good at it but uh, I'm excited to get into it and see if we can do it it actually reminds me a lot of a little game called turmoil that we played in the past the gameplay isn't that similar to it but it's kind of got that relaxed atmosphere that uh, turmoil brought us as well so we have to name our vineyard so uh, what do we name it all right, you know what? I actually do live in wine country in my neck of the woods, so I know they have pretty stupid, simplistic names. I, I don't know why, but that just equates to fanciness, so uh, I see a lot of, like, two-lettered vineyards around me, so we're just gonna do DG, capital DG, of course. You know what? Actually, let's, let's even go a little further. Lowercase first D, D capital G. That's, I, I don't know why, but that, that's, that, that, that's considered fancy these days, at least in my neck of the woods, so... That should work, let's try this out, and here we are at our vineyard. So, uh, this is obviously where we grow our grapes. Now, the forest tiles give you a bonus with adjacent tiles, so obviously we're going to want to keep that forest there and get these uh, vineyards around it. Now, there should also be, yes, different types of soils around. You can actually randomize these as well if you don't like a tile. Uh, you can totally re-roll it. Uh, what does the lake do? I don't think it does anything, so we'll probably be re-rolling that one. Uh, but yeah, I figured I would just show you how this works. Obviously, you expand out into the hexagon tiles uh, the further you get into the game. But for right now, we only got one vineyard, so we may as well plant some grapes and get this thing started. Also, this is our headquarters. I think you can upgrade this too. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Let's focus on planting something right now. All right, so what do we want? Cabernet Sauvignon? Uh, or, I hope I said that anywhere near right. By the way, I don't know any of these terms. I'm not even a wine guy. I, I rarely ever have wine unless someone offers me it. Or, of course, Chardonnay. Now, that's all we currently have. Throughout the game, you're supposed to get access to more wine, uh, different types of ways to refine the wine. Uh, but right now, I think we got the basic bitch stuff. Now, I know... A lot of people praise Chardonnay, and it's also the most expensive of the two options that we have. I believe it's a white wine, hence the green grapes, so we will have to keep that me memorized. When we do bottle it, we need to put it in a white wine bottle. All right, so this costs 10000 bucks. monthly maintenance of $100. We got 24000 I think we can afford it, so let's do that. Uh, now that's planted, we just got to wait it out and wait for them to grow. Now, it does get a little in-depth here. We actually do got to do trimming and whatnot, uh, so it should be fun when this does start. You can see... Looks like it's growing a little bit right now. We got some rain coming in somewhere. Or at least I heard rain. I guess it's actually technically winter right now. Hence the white tiles. Oh no, never mind. I totally lied. It's spring. I don't know why the tiles turn white. I guess that uh, means it's daytime. So this is going to uh, shower us. I'm assuming that's going to grow this out more now. The way this works, you can see the ripeness over here. We're currently at a one ripeness. You want your wine to be about between four and seven. Now, that, with that being said, how we can affect the ripeness is with trimming. So if we uh, don't trim and allow these things to just grow, that blocks out the sunlight and that makes a drop in ripeness. We obviously don't want that because we're currently at one. So what we're going to want to do, I actually pause time here, is trim this a little bit. Uh, I guess we've got to hit play to see what's happening. And let's trim this all the way down. Now, assuming we're getting enough sunlight, that should actually allow us to uh, go up the ripeness scale a little bit. Uh, it's not working just yet, though, and of course the freaking thing grew in again. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep cutting this, uh, because I want these things to be ripe. And there we go, it's slowly going up. Uh, mind you, it's only been one day. Now, how does this work? Okay, so this is going by months. So, uh, time in this game is a lot faster than I expected, which is a good thing, because winemaking is a long, long, boring, mostly, process. So, it's good that we're going through. There's autumn. Uh, ripeness is up to three now. I think I'm also, I, I think it's almost ready to be harvested. Oh, actually, we can harvest it right now if we wanted to. Now, uh, yeah, we should probably do that. We can, oh, the upper, the ripeness is actually at four right now. So that's good enough for me. We're going to harvest it. Uh, we'll hit play here and bam, there we go. This is the report on the quality and yield of this year's harvest. So kind of through the middle here. I, again, I have no idea what people like in wine. I think there's a mixture of people who like some acid wine, some sweet wine. Uh, you get the idea. So we yielded 1.32 tons of grapes 
pretty de decent with a mixture of middle levels in acidity, sweetness, tannins, and body. So I think that's pretty good. I would say that's a good safe wine. We don't need any crazy acidic wine or sweet wine right now. Uh, so we're going to hit done. Now we do the fun part of mashing it. And again, uh, we are just starting out, so we only got one way to mash right now, which is, you know, lifting up those pant legs and stomping on it with something called piggage. I... Don't know if that's how to pronounce it, but uh, this is in increases tannins by two. Takes five seconds per varietal to complete. A traditional form of crushing grapes that is closely associated with the popular image of winemaking. Yes, when I think, you know, they're crushing grapes, this is what I envision them doing. I know it's not that way anymore, I'm sure, but yes. All right, let's crush those grapes, and the tannins should go up on that. Can't really do much about that. Uh, again, I don't, know, I don't know if tannins are a good thing or a bad thing, to be honest. So now we got to bottle it, or... Sorry, fermentated. It's, we're, we're not at bottling yet. Fermentation is important. Now, with fermentation, the longer the period, a decrease in sweetness. So, I kind of like the idea that we are uh, right in the middle with sweetness. So, I'm going to put it at a month, I think. You want a little bit of fermentation since it is wine after all, but we don't want too much. Uh, maximum we can go is one month. Or, sorry, four months. So, I think one month is safe. It shouldn't drop the sweetness too much. And now we wait again for our delicious wine to be fermented. I guess we could speed up time here. There we go. Uh, one, one month takes a longer time than I expected. There we go. A month's done. Now it's time for the pressing. So for every 10% of pressed juice, your acidity increases by one. Before your wine can be aged, you need to press the must to obtain the ferment fermented juices. Use the slider to determine the ratio between pressed and free run juice. More pressed juice means higher acidity. So I think we want, let's let's take a risk here. I want a little bit of acidity here, but I don't want too much. I think let's let's bump it up to 40% press, which is going to make this an eight acidity. I know some people like acidic wine uh, with a 60% free run juice. So that should bump it up to an eight if my math is correct. And there we go. We got an acidic Chardonnay here. Again, no idea if that's a good thing or not. Now we get to choose the barrel type, which I think is going to change it as well. Uh, unfortunately, you can see all these things are locked right now, so all we can choose is French Oak. Uh, decreases the city by one and tannins by two for every month you leave it stored, so that's actually really cool. I'm, I wouldn't mind... I think we'll store it for just one month or two, though. I don't want to drop everything all the way down. Uh, so we'll just store it, and now we wait. Uh, so we, I think you can check it out, yes, in here, and this is where you can bottle it, and before we can actually sell it, we need to get it reviewed, so that's gonna be the fun part. I'm, I'm gonna wait a month or so, though. Actually, it's already December, so we should probably do it soon here. I'll just wait one more month, and we'll try it out, we'll see what happens, and if people like it, that's good, if people don't, well, it's our first wine! We, we have to learn from our mistakes, so let's just speed up time here, get through December, the winter month, there we go, January. All right, and that dropped the acidity, like it said, down to a six, and we got a nice even wine right now. So we're gonna bottle this thing, this is also something we gotta do right, so it is a white wine. Uh, we're gonna do a cork cap, because cork is always better. Bottling costs went way up for a cork cap, though, god damn, I hope it's worth it. And we also have to name it. Uh, okay, you know what? Let's just keep it basic bitch right now. DG Chardonnay 2017. Uh, bottling cost is 4200 so if we don't sell a killer here, uh, we're gonna have some struggles with some money. I'm sure we're gonna sell some of it, though. So we got the cork, we got everything, everything looks great. Let's bottle that. Uh, and now we get to organize a tasting. So basically, reviewers come judge our wine, and we get paid based on what they judge. So we have to choose the right reviewers here. Prestige of all these guys is basically zero. Meaning they're not that picky, so that might be a good thing for us, but uh, obviously they have no prestige, so probably people don't really care about their opinion. So we'll invite them, because that's all we can do right now, and... Look at that! We got four out of five stars, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, so I feel pretty good about that. Uh, across the board, it was all four stars. Perfect for a meal enjoyed al fresco on a mild summer afternoon. Yes, the delicious wine. Alright, so now we can sell it, and again, a little bit more in-depth. Uh, price per bottle, 20. Okay, so 
Now we can see how much money we're going to earn. Also, we have to consider who we're going to sell to right now. Because distributor relations is an important thing uh, from what the tutorial said. Basically, when we move that to a five, we unlock something interesting. That's all it said. But uh, basically, we want to focus on one seller and sell them all my good stuff. And then the other sellers can get some of the bad stuff and we don't have to care about relations. So, what sounds fancy? What sounds like a good thing? Hogang Wine Market, Manhattan Sellers, or Ferrer and Brothers. I think we're gonna go with the first one here and let's do 420. Actually, you know what? Let's split it up. That way we're selling in two stores. We'll do 210 over here and then 210 at Manhattan Sellers. Uh, actually, quantity available is 630. So, technically it works out that we can do 210 everywhere. That might not be a bad idea, but we'll do it right now and uh, just see. Oh, no, actually, uh, it actually changes when I update it. So, if I try 420 here, yes, now there's a quantity of zero available. So, we had way more wine than I thought. Uh, so, I don't want this to be the main one. We'll drop this back down to 210 and we'll up this to 420. All right, so we got our wine in all the stores. Let's sell that stuff and done. Now, I don't know if we earn money right away. No, I think we actually have to wait for the bottles to sell. Uh, but we got rid of our stock, so that's good. We can focus on growing some more. Now, the great thing about this game is once there's a grape on a soil plot, you actually don't need to change it unless you do kill that uh, plot somehow. So we're going to continue building or growing Chardonnay here. Uh, I would, I'm curious what we can build in, like, the sandy areas, because that's obviously going to be a much different grape. Uh, but, yeah, right now, there's really not much we can do. We have $9,200, though, so I, we're obviously selling something. Let's actually go to our chateau, as it's called. And we'll go to the latest financial report and see what's going on here. All right, we're, we're at, it's actually saying zero sales right now, so it hasn't updated yet. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to wait. Now, how do we upgrade this? You don't have enough money to upgrade your chateau. Uh, I don't know what upgrading it does. I guess we'll figure it out later on. I'm just going to wait it out right now, wait for my grapes to grow, and hopefully we'll start earning some money too. All right, the grapes are currently growing. We are earning money, which is good. I really wish there was a better way to see the report, because the only thing is this financial report here, it's still saying it must update... Uh, like, oh yeah, year-end financial report, so it updates at year-end. We're currently in spring, so that's not going to update yet. Uh, so we'll check that out at the end of the year. Right now, though, my grapes are growing once again, so we got to get, uh, focusing on these things so we can make the perfect grape. So the other one, it works pretty well, obviously. It seems to be selling good. We're at 20,000. I believe that's kind of where we started at, so I'm assuming that there's still going to be... Uh, some earnings coming in, but I think that made a name for myself. The DG wine is real right now, guys. So, this time, I don't think I'm going to trim as much. We're just going to play around here, you know. Winemaking's all about, you know, fine-tuning and fine adjustments. So, maybe we can... Actually, the ripeness is going up way more this time. That might have to do with the weather that we're having. I don't know. Now that there is a bunch of bush here, basically, that blocks the light out and the wine stops getting so, so ripe. So, I think that should be good. You know what? Maybe we should go for a really ripe wine, though. So, I, I, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to trim it. Maybe I'm trimming too much. I don't know. But this is all about experimentation, and it hopefully will work out. All right, and it is ready to be crushed. Now, I, I wonder how long I can wait before the grapes go bad, because I was hoping to get a little bit more ripe. Uh, I wanted to get a nice ripe wine, but uh, I don't want to wait too long to the point where the grapes go bad, too. Uh, age is one year, so... I guess you can make it go a little longer. We're at five now, so I think I'm going to risk it. I think we'll wait a little bit. Uh, perfection takes time, and we'll allow the ripeness to go way up here. And we can drop it down during the uh, processing here a little bit. And I think I'm going to try and get around a seven ripeness wine. All right, we're, we're at eight. I think that should be good. Let's start harvesting. Well, they're really quick at harvesting, by the way. Whoa! Okay, a ten sweetness. Acidity is almost nothing. Body is everything, and tannins are everywhere, so that's a lot of wine, too. 1.54 tons. Uh, and again, <laughs> the bad thing about this game is I have no way to judge if this is good or bad. I'm a beer guy. I just like a simple beer, so hopefully this is good. Upgrade Chateau to level 2 to unlock. Okay, so that's how I get these unlocks here, which is good to know. We need to upgrade our main place. All right, we're going to go back to, uh, you know, lifting up the uh, pant sleeves once again and crushing with our bare feet. I can't believe people used to eat feet wine. That's gross. Anyways, we'll crush that. I'm, I'm sure it's still a common process, by the way. Uh, just because people love that old style. 
Anyways, here we go. Fermentation time. So for every one month of fermentation, decreases sweetness by one. So do I really want to try like a really sweet wine? I think it might be a good idea. I know generally people like aged wine though. It's kind of like cheese. Uh, the age is important. So I don't know if I'm not making good wine because of this because we have crazy sweetness, crazy tannins, crazy body. Uh, you know what? Let's just do a month though and see what happens. All right, the fermentation is complete. Now it's time to press that stuff. Uh, I gotta remember, for every 10% of pressed juice, your acidity increases by one. I think having a little bit of acidity is good, so we are going to press... Let's do a 50-50 blend. Uh, we still have crazy sweetness, we still have crazy tannins, and uh, yeah, we'll try it out and see what happens. Now we're going to bottle it. Uh, aging softens the wine's tannins and acidity giving it a smoother and more balanced taste. So the tannins in a city are really high, so I think we're going to really age this. Decreasing the acidity by one and two tannins for every month. So yeah, I'm gonna try and drop this down to like one and two, I think. Uh, we're just gonna take our time and uh, allow that wine to age. So we're currently in January. I think I'll uh, harvest it like March, April area. Uh, we can also check now that I remembered how much is it? I wish it told me how much it costs. Okay, so it's 100000 to upgrade this, so we can't get that anytime soon, unfortunately. Uh, but I did want to check out my year-end report. We got a net income of 5600 So, you know, we're making money. We're making about 33% profit right now, which is uh, really good for a business. I don't know if it's good for this game, personally, but our first sale obviously is working out. All right, and we also got some more grapes growing. I'm still aging that wine. I guess it would be good to get rid of it now. Uh, we need to increase the ripeness, so let's use the shears to get rid of that. Uh, there's supposed to be more tools, by the way, later on in the game. I don't know what they do. I'm sure we'll find out. Uh, but I think that should be enough aging for our wine. So let's open this up and bottle it. So once again, we're using Chardonnay, so we want the cork because the cork seemed to work well. People liked it. And the yellow bottle because it's white wine. At least I hope that's the right bottle. I'm assuming this is for red and this is for white. Uh, this, the, the basic name worked last time, so I think we're just going to stick with that for right now and we'll see how it works. Alright, this is always the fun part for me, is the tasting, because I get to see if I did good or not. So, we got some uh, shitty people once again. I don't know when we get good people, because uh, through the tutorial, they all had like three to five stars. So we got some pretty bad guys right now. Final rating of two stars. Obviously not as good as our first batch. Is white wine supposed to taste like paint thinner? If yes, then I guess this wine does a great job. Wow, that's harsh. I really wish I kind of wrote down what the wine looked like at the end. I didn't even look at it. I guess it, okay, it shows it right here. Acidity way up, sweetness way up. Uh, so they obviously don't like that. And fuck, did I put it, I put it in the wrong bottle or is this just automated because that's the red wine bottle, which it could have been me, I don't know. Obviously, this one's not gonna sell as well. So I think we're going to, again, we're gonna focus on this distributor. Uh, we didn't even get one point with that, but that's okay. These bottles are only worth 1420, so we'll sell 540 to these dudes, 540 to these dudes, and Ferrer and brothers don't get anything because I want to keep them as fellow allies, and I don't want to sell them my crap. I obviously don't want to get rid of this, though. It's a lot of money, so there we go. We're done, and uh, a little bit of a bad harvest, but you know what? It still should be fine, and we got these grapes here growing. Uh, age, I'm assuming that means age of the actual vineyard, is two years, so I wonder if we change this... Uh, or if we replant it, if it would change the grapes at all. I have no idea. Oh, what do we got here? Vine is suffering from fungal rot, and its yield is decreased by 50% every month. Now, is there any way to combat this? I wonder... Oh, it's gone. Okay, never mind. It went away on its own. I think this time, I'm gonna keep my, my ripeness down. I feel like the whole ripeness strategy did not work out for me. So let's keep it nice and low. Uh, once this is ready to go, I think I'm just going to harvest it. I should also be thinking about total yield, because this slowly does go up, so the, the longer we allow the grapes to grow, obviously, the bigger the batch we're going to have. So I might even let it go a little bit, uh, because as you can see, alright, it's harvest time, it's autumn, uh, my ripeness is all the way down right now. I have a total yield of 1.54, so I'm going to speed up time here. See if we can get that to like 2, because that's going to allow us to sell a lot of wine, and hopefully it's good. Alright, 1.76, there we go. Uh, let's also chop this a bit uh, just to clean it up. Oh, I didn't mean to clean it up that much. I thought it was uh, over-harvested, but we're at 1.98, so that should be good. Let's harvest that stuff now, 
And that's going to be a lot of wine. 1.98 tons, to be more specific. All right, the one that increases tannin, so we have no choice. Let's crush that stuff and uh, get to selling this. So again, the ripeness is actually at one right now. We want it to ripen a little bit. Uh, I'm hoping to get it to four. For every month of fer fermentation, increase the sweetness by one. Wine, like all alcoholic drinks, need to ferment. Your wine sweetness will change depending on how long you ferment the wine. Perfection is only achieved through trial and error. So yes, there's no perfect way of doing this. Also, I didn't read this. Some storage methods have a chance of imparting different flavors to your wine, so experimenting with each could lead to some interesting results. Uh, well, we again, we only have one choice right now, but I'm going to age it for a couple months to drop that acidity down, and the tannins as well. We'll try, you know, a kind of low-leveled wine. Now, it is winter once again. Actually, we can check our yearly report since it is a new year. Years go really quickly in this game. Our age is three, so let's go check out our financial report, see how we're doing. We actually did increase, even with that awful wine, we increased our net income by a couple grand. So, can't really complain when we uh, are still doing good, even with the shitty wine. All right, so we're really going to age this. I want to get the acidity and tannins possibly even all the way down just to try it and see what happens here. Uh, again, we have another crop growing anyways, and you can just store that for as long as you want. So I'm going to try and keep the ripeness down on these ones too because I feel like that's the right way to do it with Chardonnay. Uh, so we're just going to continue to trim this as that wine ages. All right, I saw this pop up. I can't believe it's not butter. Buttery flavor grants 10% to your wine's price. So I think that's a good indicator that we should possibly sell this. Maybe we should constantly wait for those. Uh, sweetness and acidity did drop. Uh, tannins as well did drop. So this is kind of like a low-tiered one. But again, I have no idea what instigates a good bottle of wine. So we'll try this out with the cork once again in the white bottle. I'm assuming I did it right last time, but you never know. Again, the bottling costs are a little bit more with the cork. Actually, a lot more. But I think... Actually, it's... What the hell? It's the same this time. Last time it was totally different. I am very confused. Uh, may, may, maybe cork prices went down or there's a glitch because it's all the same now. So I guess we're going to do cork once again with the white bottle. Let's try it out here. Now, yes, the bottle just automatically goes to red for some reason. I was, I've assumed I didn't do it wrong. So let's organize the tasting. Boris Mayo. I, I think we got the same ones every time. So hopefully these guys get a bit better. Uh, invite the tasting. Oh, oh. That, that, that's not good. How is it the longer I make wine, the worse I get? <laughs> Wait, what, what, what do they want to say about this? Why, white wine is meant to be a good introduction to oniology for beginners. Instead, this wine might scare people back to drinking pale ale. All right, well, uh, should I just get rid of this wine at this point? I think, uh, how much, how much, let's see how much it's worth per bottle. Nine dollars. That is some cheap motherfucking wine. Do I want to take the price hit? Because, uh, I think that drops my renown if I sell some shitty wine. Uh, so yeah, I think we're gonna risk it here. And as bad as it is, we're going to discard it. Because I'm not about selling zero star wine. One star might be good enough, but zero stars, that's just embarrassing, man. All right, so we had an issue this time. The vine was been overexposed to the sun and stopped producing, which actually is a good thing because uh, the ripeness is dropping now that there's some uh, shrubbery around it. Uh, it is time to yield, though, so... Oh, shit, I missed... I missed the yield zone? Oh, oh this whole winemaking thing is rough. All right, well, another shit... This is going to be a really shitty year because I missed one harvest and the other harvest I dumped, so... Quite literally, we're earning nothing this year. It's going to be a rough year, but uh, you know what? Sometimes it happens. Well, it's been a pretty rough year. I've been trying to make this as ripe as possible by uh, doing constant trimming. And as you can see, the ripeness is not going up. So I think weather has a big play into how the grapes react. Uh, seems like ripeness is going up a little bit now. Again, during harvest season, you want it to be about four to seven. So we are well on our way. Uh, speak of the devil, it is harvest season. I don't want to miss another year of harvest. Uh, so we need to do it very soon, September. I think October is the latest. So I'm just going to try... We bumped it to a 5. You know what? That's good enough for me. Uh, I want a nice small harvest. We got only 0 0.44 tons. So there was, like, no growth at all this year. Uh, for the record, uh, the other year before was almost 2 tons. Uh, through combination of excellent weather and canopy management, this year's grapes were exceptional. This wine gets plus 1 to its final writing. If its final writing is... Above 3.5 stars. Okay, the pressure's on. 
If we make a good wine, it's going to be a very, very good wine. You can see right down the middle again, and I believe our first wine was kind of right down the middle as well, so I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic right now. I hope we can kind of redeem ourselves here from the last few harvests, which were not good at all. So, once again, we can only choose one type of crushing, so we're just going to do that and quickly go through the... Uh, Refining here, and hopefully we can build a decent wine. Okay, fermentation. Every one month of fermentation decreases sweetness by one. And again, I, I still don't know if I really want a low sweet wine or high. I think I'm going to play it safe once again and keep it kind of in the middle. I feel like the middle is the sweet spot for Chardonnay. So, we're only going to do one month. Uh, we will leave that to fermentation, and we will speed up time uh, to quickly get through this month here. And please, God, give me a good wine. Because it needs to be really good because the harvest was quite low. 0 0.44 or a half a ton is not a lot of wine. All right, so press juice acidity increases by one. Uh, before your wine can be aged, you need to press it. All right, so I think I think we'll do a 40-60 with this. It's going to up bump the acidity, but we drop that down during the storage process or the aging process. So acidity is crazy right now. I think it's kind of supposed to be, though. So we're going to go to French Oak, uh, decrease acidity by one, and tannins by two for every month. And I think I'll drop that down to kind of in the middle again. So uh, we're going to wait a couple months. Three months, I think, should be the prime spot. So it's November now, December, January, February is when I will probably sell. You can see our funds are not looking too good right now. So we definitely, definitely need a successful wine here. Regardless of how this one does... I gotta sell it because we are going to run out of money, and I don't know if there's loans in this game, uh, but I hope I don't need to do one. So it's January. Let's actually uh, slow down time and check out the wine here, making sure it's okay. Uh, acidity still a little bit high. Uh, I think, yeah, we're going to drop the acidity to six, and then we'll possibly sell. And welcome to February. Okay, so that should be good, I think. Uh, so let's go back down there. Oh, this scares me. Acidity. That looks good. That looks like a nice wine. It also turned into the buttery flavor. So I must be really good at making buttery wine, which grants 10% to the wine's price. So once again, if this is a good bottle of wine, man, uh, we are going to be good. All right, the bottling, another $720. Thankfully, it's not that expensive this time because the yield was rather low. Uh, how many bottles did we get? 240. That's it. Okay, please, guys. Please work with me. It's, it's It's been a rough few years here. You guys, you better like this one. Ah! Oh, yes! Yes, I am a wine prodigy! <laughs> yes, after three failed attempts, I got a five star, so now I'm a wine prodigy. The wine is delectable, perfect for... From first sip to final swig. Okay, please tell me this is like a $300 bottle, because I need it, damn it. All right, let's sell this stuff. 2552. Okay, that's our best yet, guaranteed. We're gonna sell 120 of those and earn a little bit of money at least this year. And look at that! Our distributor relations went up two points because of that perfect crisp wine. All right, that feels good. Let's get the hell out of here and start seeing that, that funding go up because, man, it's been a rough one. It has not been easy being a vineyard owner. Especially when you don't know shit about wine. This really was not the best idea here, but it did work out because, well, the money should be going up soon, hopefully. It better go up soon because I, I I got more shit to do. Yes, there we go. We're at 2,736. Uh, I, I'm, I'm scared to actually look at our financial report because last year was not nice. Yeah, we lost 6,800 bucks with a total revenue of zero because the year was a complete failure. So I kind of just want to see what this year ends at and then we'll probably end this episode there. Uh, just seeing how much we actually earned this year. And my renown actually bumped up to three as well. So we're doing something right, mind you. You can see my funding going back down, so uh, yeah, we didn't, we just didn't get enough yield. Now the yield's really good, so we're gonna go through this once again. Ripeness is actually looking really good as well. Uh, it should be almost harvest time. And with a bigger yield is obviously going to give us more money now. I'm actually worried, are we gonna have enough funding to actually bottle all this? 1.54 should be good. Uh, we'll do this as we wait for the year to end and try and do another one here. This is looking good. Uh, we got another through an excellent combination. Uh, we, we might have another five-star wine here. And this time, quite literally triple the yield of last year. So if we can get this, which I really need, because I don't even got enough money to bottle this shit, uh, we might do well. So, oh, God, though. I, I, I'm actually worried we're not going to be able to bottle it. 
All right, there we go. Now it's time to press it. And again, I'm going to do, you know what? Let's do 40% this time. Tannins are really high in this. And the acidity is also quite high as well. So we'll do that. And then we'll drop it down through aging once again as well. Uh, so choose barrel type. We got to do this one. Acidity and tannins by one and two, which is the things we want to drop. Now we're going to have to wait a little bit. Okay, we are on the red. But it's good. It's, it's okay because we got a really good harvest right now. So at least we didn't lose the game the moment we went in the red. You know, starting a business, not the easiest thing. Generally, you do go into the red. Hopefully, we can change that around now that I have understood what the market wants for Chardonnay, which is kind of like a middle area wine. All right, and it is January, so we're going to check our earnings in a second. Mind you, we're not doing very good right now. All right, acidity quite high. We'll try it out, though, and see what happens. Once again, we got the butter, so uh, we got a little bit of a bonus. You don't have enough funds to make this purchase. Shit, well, how the fuck? I, I think I'm stuck then, right? I don't think I'm going to be able to actually earn money. Oh, shit! I just looked at our sales. We still have 120 of those wines available. So, oh, they just dropped the storage down by a lot. Oh, my God. Thank God. Okay, so we still have a little bit of wine, guys. These guys want $31 for it. So I guess their price changed a bit because of their regulations. So we're going to sell those to those. And we look at we bumped everything up. So that's how to do it. You got to keep that relations in common. Uh, basically, it slowly drops over time. So the more we sell, the better. Uh, but hopefully... With those few bottles, we should be able to go into the green and sell some more. Man, we're struggling hard right now. It's actually... Oh, God. Now now we need 2,500. All right. So we need 3,240. Our money is going up a little bit. Oh, there it goes down again because of, you know, upkeep costs. Aren't they amazing? Oh, I don't think... I, I, th I think we're... Oh, oh, wait, wait. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Yep, now we're going down once again, so, you know, we earned a little bit of wine. I haven't even been looking at this harvest, I probably should have, but, uh, if I can't bottle it, I can't sell it, so I can't do shit. Uh, so yeah, I'm assuming after a year of just in the, the red, I think we lose, but we'll, we'll, we'll try and see what happens. Alright, guys, well, I don't think there's any sort of you lose type thing in this game. It is an early access title, after all. Uh, so basically when you run out of money, you just can't do anything anymore. I can get to, I can grow as many grapes and barrel as many uh, Grapes as I want, but obviously I can't sell it unless I can afford the bottling cost So I think we did all right today, you know, obviously uh, Well, we did we, we didn't succeed today But I did learn a lot about the game and considering we had a full year of you know a total loss I think you know we we, we held out pretty damn well, so yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. Once again, this is... Whoa, okay, begin pressing, sure, why not? This is Terror. Uh, yeah, if you guys do want to see some more of it, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully, next time, we can obviously get a flourishing empire running. Uh, I think we're gonna go drop down to the uh, cheaper grapes as well. I think my, my, my upkeep costs were a little bit too expensive. Regardless, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Unfortunately, I couldn't upgrade anything. I'm just really curious what the other processes are. I, I want to, you know, get deeper into the winemaking because this is kind of a little informative as well, which is obviously really nice. So, yeah, as always, guys, thanks for watching and liking, and I'll see you in the next one.